Our question comes from Heather Johansson in Waco. She and her husband and their three young boys noticed these larvae in their garden. They found them under wet leaves near earthworms. Rather than freak out about these alien looking beings, they decided to do some research and reach out to us. We suggested that the squirmy worm appeared to be some sort of fly larvae. After digging around online, Heather and the boys believe that these are crane fly larvae and it appears to us that they're right. I love pointing out that with just a little bit of feedback, this dedicated family had the right information to go exploring on their own. We definitely don't know every insect on the planet, nor even every plant. Personally, I get tagged in lots of social media posts from people wanting a plant ID. Rarely am I confident enough to make a pronouncement of a specific species or even genus. And I also don't have the amount of time that I'd like to devote to this type of sleuthing but I can usually at least get it down to a particular family or two and direct people towards the correct path of research. It brings me so much joy to hear back from people who then are able to successfully ID the plant for themselves. Heather and her sons also discovered something that led to a fun hands-on project. Last year, they planted a row of Mexican feather grass. After the plants bloomed, some of the eventual seeds fell to the ground and took root. When the children noticed baby plants popping up, the family dug them up and planted them in trays. Now they have 24 more plants for their garden and, or to share with friends. From League City, Steve and Chi Bearfield asked about this mossy growth on their oak trees. Most of the trees in their neighborhood have this same growth. Is this okay? These are lichens and they're not anything to worry about. They're often found on trees in more woodsy areas and in areas like yours, close to the coast, with high relative humidity. In Liberty Hill, Casey Paisold's favorite native plant is white mist flower, Ageratina havanensis. It took a little while to establish, but now this striking beauty is alive with butterflies, moths, and bees every autumn. If you haven't cut yours back yet, late spring is the perfect time. Some years this plant freezes on top, but even if it doesn't, Cutting it back to about a foot above the ground each year will encourage a bushier plant and a heavier floral display. And now's a good time to plant one in part sun. While tramping around central Texas, plantsman Jim Liggy spotted these treasures. Emerging trout lily, Americanum, also called yellow trout lily, and yellow dogtooth violet. In February and early March, cedar waxwings swooped through to devour fruits from invasive ligustrum, native yopon holly, and other fruiting plants. Eric Arnston from Stonebridge Pond and Waterfall Company shot this video of them grabbing a drink before dinner and redecorating a car. We'd love to hear from you, so head to centraltexasgardener.org and send us your questions, pictures, and videos. Mm -hmm.